Yes, good evening. Sava here from Football Heritage TV, joined by Strasbourg Steve, the man with all the knowledge from across the world of football. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the breaking news that, according to a number of media outlets, Tottenham Hotspur have had a bid in the region of 60 million euros rejected for Pepe. Now, this isn't the Pepe, the centre-back, who's played all those years for Real Madrid. This is Pepe, who plays for the same team, but more as a winger. And Steve's going to tell us why he'd be good as a utility man. We'll come, we'll come back right after this. Yes, welcome to this video. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know you watch a lot of football from across the globe. So whenever I get a player that I'm not 100% sure about and I may have seen but not really concentrated on, you're my go-to guy. Um, what was your first thought when you heard the news that Spurs have had a bid rejected, apparently, for Pepe of Porto? What's your thoughts? He's a very useful player. Um, he's a player that is consistent in a few different positions, but he's never consistently used in one position. It's like yeah. having it's 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 like having something. You know what I'm saying? It's it's he's a play, he's just a good footballer in general. It's a well-rounded, sure. uh, pretty skillful, smart footballer. He has some experience. Obviously, 26 years old. I think it. I mean, 60 million is expensive for him. I think a little bit, but. He's a player that I can see doing doing very well in the Premier League because look at how many fantastic, fantastic footballers have come from Portugal right mm -hmm. to uh, the Premier League. I mean, Man City, a big part of their squad. Ruben Diaz, Ederson, and Bernardo Silva, all Portuguese-based. So, yeah. you know, the, the, these kind of players do well in the Prem. They really, really do. So, I, I but overall, I, I do like I do like the move. A bit pricey. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. let, let, let's let's put the price to one side for the moment. Look, yeah. I, I, as I said, I've not seen him play much. Um, I'm, I've watched Porto, but without really fixating on him, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so I've probably seen him in passing. I think a lot of Spurs fans immediately today, their first thought was the same as my first thought this morning was, hang on, isn't Pepe 40, like the centre-back? So, Portuguese, so Portuguese that, Pepe. Yeah, so that's where our heads went. So from what you've seen... You've said that he doesn't play consistently in one position. What do you think that what do you think Spurs fans would expect from him? What would Postacoglu like about him then? And what are the positions that he tends to be rotated into? So it's usually between three positions. And actually, this season for Porto, he played as a number 10. I forget which game, but he literally it was a 4 2 Conceição set up in a 4 2 3 1 and played him as a 10. And they, had, right. uh, they had him feeding through balls to uh, Taremi. So, um, for me, the position that you'll see him play, you'll see him play everywhere. You could see him play on the left side of a midfield three. I think that could work, definitely, because, again, defensively and offensively, he's just a well-rounded footballer. Played right back as well. He can play uh, left wing or right wing. Um, so, like I said, he will be a very useful player, a very, very useful player, I think. Well, look, let me let me bring up some of his details on sofa score and then we can talk through this together. Um, and again, listen, I'm not going to pretend I know loads about the guy. I think that would be really disingenuous of me. Hence why I brought you on to the, to the stream today. So hopefully um, you, you can see this, Steve. I think everyone will be able to see this at home. Let me know if you can't at any point, Steve, because I'm actually now in sofa score. I'm leaving you to StreamYard. Um, what I've done is I've brought up his information here and I, I've actually set it to last season. I don't feel like, you know, if, if I if I set it to this season, I feel like we're looking at two games and I just don't feel like that's a, a big enough sample size for anybody. So, look, straight away, we're looking at this guy. He's Brazilian, 26 years of age. He's saying that his preferred foot is right and it's just literally got here. His position is midfield and his strengths, high pressing, long balls, playmaking and yeah. no outstanding weaknesses, as it says down here. Um, would you go along with that? His weaknesses for me would probably be discipline. And, but you know what? That's, I think, a, a, um, what is it? A symptom of uh, Conceição, his team overall. 
discipline wise last year they did have a few red cards in fact pepe did get two yellows into a red in the return leg against inter in the quarterfinals when they drew nil nil and you know uh crashed out the inter um so that probably would be the weakness for me but like i said overall as a footballer i like him i do really really like him like i could see a new castle going for him because he could play on the wing and he has an engine like an Almiron or an Anthony Gordon. So, like, it's a player I would take personally. And it fits sure. Buster Coglu's system because, like, you know, it's the high pressing, it's the stamina, it's the commitment, it's the availability to play in any number of positions. If Royale is not in form, which is more often than not, or if yep. Pedro Poro is suspended for a game, or if a winger isn't working, he could play left or right. Um, he's good with both feet as well. Um, yeah. so again, it's a, it's, it's, it's a good player, man. He's not going to score you a load of goals or assists. He's just going to be a consistent team player, which is what Pastor yeah. Puglu likes. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's look at that then. So if, if I, if I now, um, take your attention to the, to the right hand side here, I think you could probably see where my cursor is moving. I hope if not, you can see, um, yeah. you can see what I'm looking no, at. I could see so, it. Yeah. so, so last season, uh, played in 34 of the 38 league matches, 28 starts, Averaging 78 minutes per game. Now, yeah. let's look at some of the standouts. Listen, you know me, Steve. I'm not somebody that likes to go so deep into stats that I get buried in them because I don't feel that that's the best way to judge players. But I'm going to look at some highlights here. Is he, he only got four goals throughout the season playing for Porto. He doesn't have many shots. We're looking here that he has an average of one shot per game. Yeah. Um, um, his goal conversion is only 12%. But when I go down to his passing, yes. this is where it gets a little bit better. Well, if you add the four goals to the seven assists, now you're looking at 11 goal contributions in 34 games. It's one every three, right? So yeah. you've got one, one co- contribution every three games. Um, and, you know, he's got some other good stats, you know, so, so some of his passing accuracy um, in his own half, especially. Um and even with defending, looks like he's getting in there. He's putting in a tackle or two. You know, he's intercepting. Um, mm-hmm. He's got successful, uh, you know, 50% of the time, he's got successful dribbles. Uh, 50% of the time, he's winning his duels. 54% of the time, winning his ground duels. Um, are, are these stats that do him justice? Are these stats that would be fair when looking at a player like this? Yeah, watching Porto, and I know how Concesa sets up the team. It's very – there, and like I said earlier about the discipline, I feel like Concesa and him himself, he's gotten sent off a few times for Porto for just going delirious. The guy, yeah. the guy he, obviously brilliant football. He's a good coach, but I do think he needs to work on that, and it rubs off on the team in yep. some good ways and some bad. You take the good with the bad if you're winning league titles, uh, but you know what I mean. So, But for me, yeah. It does. It, it absolutely fits the bill on that right hand side or the left, particularly the right, I would say, in terms of a right wing or a, or, um, or, a, or uh, sorry, a right back in a 4 2 3 1. And, and the thing is with the goal scoring, he's not the main guy for goal scoring. That's a Wendy yeah. Nielsen. That's a Taremi. Yeah, Those sure. are the guys that pick up most of the goals for Porto. So, but like I said, he's a team player, he's a good passer of the ball. He, 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 you know, he can do those triangles. He can combine, make good decisions. So I, and is, I, is, is he, is he comfortable on the ball? But, um, and what I mean by that is for what you were saying there about his ability to drop into right back as well, obviously Spurs um, at right back there, it's always a big conversation because you've got Emerson Royal who, who's not comfortable on the ball. Should we say when bringing it forward, you've got Poro who's comfortable on the ball, I think at pace when he's going, but I don't think either of them are that kind of, comfortable where the game is slowed down and you've got to think about the passing and the one twos. And um, is that more what you would likely to see from a Pepe? Someone very, a, a, a typical foreign Brazilian footballer that is comfortable on the ball, as opposed to Emerson Royal, who's a Brazilian that Honky. isn't the typical type of player. No, nah, I think, I think Pepe definitely. He's just comfortable playing like the, the sport literally, because he can yeah. play, he can get up and down the pitch or he can also, it, it, it reminds me a lot of Almiron in terms of the work rate and the just intensity. And it right. actually also even makes more sense because the end product with Miggy Almiron hasn't been fantastic at Newcastle, but he's a team player. 
It's one of the first right. players on Conseil Sal's team sheet. Um, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of so sense. Is, it, is this a player then that almost becomes like a cult hero? Rather than being yeah. the main man, he'd become a player that everyone goes, oh, I'd, I'd find a place for him in the team because, yes, you know, he gives 100% every game. You know, he's going to get stuck in and he's got a good engine to get up and down yeah. the pitch. Yeah, he's combative, a good passer, wins a lot of of, of his duels and stuff. I, yeah, I think it absolutely, man. He, like I said, well-rounded. He's very, very yeah. well-rounded. So Perfect. And, I mean, I, Look, again, we don't know if all of these reports are true, but you know what it's like when you start getting a lot of noise about one player. Um, from what you've said and what I've read about him and gone and watched about him today, I can see that this guy is a, a Postacoglu type yeah. footballer. Um, yeah. The money, all right, 60 million, but I, look, this market is just ridiculous now anyway. So I don't even know what is a good price anymore. Yeah. Just one last question. Would you see that this guy would make more sense for Tottenham than a Brennan Johnson, who they're talking about being £50 million? Pounds? I think the difference between a Brennan Johnson and a Pippe is the fact that Brennan Johnson is more versatile in terms of he could play left, maybe a second striker or yeah. on the right. So he's more of an attack-minded forward option. I'm not saying he doesn't work hard. But for me, Pepe, it makes sense because there are vulnerabilities at right back for you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there could also be some useful cover there also on the right wing if someone like Kulisewski is not in form. Yep. So yep. I think that's, that's – Which he is very much not in form and hasn't been exactly. for a very long time. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. I would go – I, I, I would definitely recommend this for Spurs, absolutely, over a Brandon Johnson. Perfect. Well, Steve, listen, uh, that's it. We're going to wrap wrap up there the video. Uh, listen, hopefully you've liked the in-depth analysis there from Steve. We've tried to dig deep into what this player is all about. Um, as always with Spurs, we are linked with so many players. Let's see if this is a player that Spurs actually act upon. Um, Steve, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. As yeah. always, everybody, please like, please subscribe. And as always, come on, you Spurs.